Hello, today I'm joined by Frankie Foster to go through Friday's seven races on the ITV7 free-to-play game that sees five races from the final day of the Cheltenham Festival and then, and then a race each from Doncaster and Fakenham. And hopefully we can come up with some more winners to help you land the mammoth £500,000 jackpot on offer for Friday's ITV7 game. By joining our free-to-play ITV7 league for the final time, you'll be able to compete for a £100 cash prize on the Friday alongside other jack superb jackpot prizes and an extra £500,000 on the final day if you manage to land the winner of the Gold Cup. And hopefully we can help give you that uh, along the way. So Frankie, first race we're going to look at uh, on the final day of the Cheltenham Festival 2022 is the Grade 1 Triumph Hurdle, um, a race that's seen some great winners over the years and it looks another crack and renewal, doesn't it, this year? Who do you fancy? It's really tricky. Um... And it's frustrating because I've gone to and fro on the top three, as many have for so long, um, between Vorban, Pied Piper, Phil Dorr. And I finally settled on Vorban and said, right, that's it. I'm not changing my mind anymore. <laughs> and then we've had all of this rain Wednesday. And it's concerning me because it's going to be a bit tacky Friday morning. The rain Wednesday night, and then as it dries out a bit Thursday, Friday, with some sunnier days, it's going to be sticky tacky ground and it the last day of racing of four but I'm I can't change again so I am going to stick with Vorban I think he's the classiest horse in the race um he has got that turn of foot I, I think again <laughs> I decided that he wouldn't be beaten by Phil Dor. he now probably has a better chance given the ground um but just based off of what we've seen the race behind Pied Piper the race in front of Phil Dor, I think he is the best horse in the race and we're going to have to put that ground worry aside and, and stay loyal to Phil Dor, uh, to, to Vorban, sorry. Yeah, it, it's one of them, isn't it, that it does look like he's going to come out of the top, the winner's going to come out of the top three in the betting, even though the ground has come for Porticello. Um, and horses like Knight Salute, Ilate Thompson, they're, they're lovely horses, but from a class angle, we're following you in here. We're going to go with Vorban as well. What I saw that day at Dublin Race Festival, he made that many mistakes um, jumping wise and the engine he had to just power clear from Phil Dorr who was coming back at him but still yeah. pulling clear um, was serious um, obviously bought by Rich Ritchie from France after four decent runs on the flat given to Mullins as you said came out at Christmas time was half a length behind Pied Piper but again didn't jump well that day Davy Russell rode uh, Pied Piper and just absolutely snuck all over to, um, ball bar on that day we put on Pied Piper stopping every, every gap he could try and get into good bit of race riding um, the, obviously, Pied Piper is the worry, and he's an ex John Gosden uh, trained on the flats. And he, Frank the Fawn, didn't he, of, of yeah. Vorban's race when winning at Cheltenham, already having some course form. But if you look at how Vorban went on um, to win in the Spring Juvenile at the Dublin Racing Festival, you'd expect there's more to come from him. And yeah, we're going to stick with you on this one and go for Vorban as well. So, hopefully, hopefully winning start. Yeah, hopefully, we're off to a winning start. So, uh, we move on to the second race on the ITV7 game, and it's at Doncaster, this one, in the two o'clock. Two mile, uh, four and a half furlongs, uh, class four handicap chase. Um, another tricky event, obviously looking away from Cheltenham. Who have you gone for? Going with Fergal and Connor Brace, who's actually been riding a couple of winners recently, um, informed the young jockey. Second chasing start. He's ran to a hurdle mark of one, two, nine, actually, which is up there with the rest. I don't think it's the highest of the field, but it's decent enough. And after only one chase start, there's definitely room for improvement. If you look at that um, race at Chepstow, a couple of these actually, Pat's Fancy ran at Cheltenham uh, the first day. Jericho Rowe, I think, was second in the handicap yesterday or day before. I can't think timings wise. Um, so there's a couple of Cheltenham handicappers in that run at Chepstow, and you You'd like to think that maybe that's form slightly better than what it is down on paper. Comes in off a mark of one, two, two, haven't finished a long way back sixth in that. So actually got dropped for his first chasing start. And I think that's incredibly fair. And as I said, off of decent hurdle runs, one chase start, he's got to improve. So yeah, I think global fame for the Fergal team would be in with a squeak here. Uh, we're going to go for ahead of the field for Emma Lavelle. Um, win at Sullivan. A winner for her, uh, yeah, when it, when it, when it so they'll, uh, over today's trip of, off a mark of 113, then stepped up over three miles, didn't stay the trip, dropped back to two mile three on good ground at Doncaster last time. Um, was a much better second behind a really pro uh, progressive type for Tom Lacey. And Tom Lacey's been in really good form of late. 
he gets back to his preferred trip today of two mile four, four and a half furlongs. Um, he's one pound lower than his latest second at, at the track. And if you look through the race, even though the Lucinda Russell horse at the top, he's going for a hat trick and looks fairly strong. Um, I think this horse has got a really, really good chance down a pound. So, yeah, two two good selections, I think, from both of us. And we should be in the frame. Moving back over to Cheltenham. And th this is a really, really tricky race, as it is every year. The county hurdle, over two miles. First handicap of uh, the Friday. Um, who have you come down on in this one, Frankie? Top Pandit, I'm going to go with for Gordon Elliott, David Russell on board. Um, that is a team that can win Cheltenham handicaps. He just looked very progressive and very exciting, similar to kind of how I was describing Brazil, where there just seems to be more in the tank with this horse and you don't really feel like you've seen it all yet, which is obviously what you want when you come into handicaps because it puts you slightly ahead of your mark if there is a little bit left to work with. Unbeaten in his last three, and each time just seems to be getting better and better. And as I said, I don't think we've seen the best of Top Bandit yet, which would make sense coming into a Cheltenham Festival if they've got him right. So, yeah, Top top Bandit near the top of the market for me, I'd, I'd hope would be in with a good chance. Yeah, Top Bandit definitely, definitely got a big chance. One I've liked a long time for this race, but I have gone against you and I have gone with State Man. I know State oh. Man was a whole... Stateman was a horse that I put up on in our Cheltenham previews for the Martin Pipe. He has been sent here instead, which you can see, only running over two miles before. Just thought he might want a bit extra, but that's not a problem really at Cheltenham going up the hill. Yeah. Um, but I just think with Stateman, he could be a graded horse in a handicap. Um, this, a lot of people saying the same. <laughs> I think there's few in the field that could be. I think Top Bandit's a really nice horse, but State Man, off his mark of 141, he could be absolutely chucked in, but I think he could be a 150 horse. Yeah. Although he fell on his stable debut, and it's not good really for trends and stats coming into the Cheltenham Festival. He then went to Limerick, won easily by 12 lengths, was very taken that day. The handicappers only give him 141. I think that's very fair considering what they've done with other horses. And the Mullins factor in this race is a big one. Um, he's won five of the last 11 renewals of this race. And like I said, he just could be a graded horse in a handicap. And I know he's at the top of the market in 92, and you don't really want to be backing favourites in these sort of races. But when you're looking just from a pure win angle for this ITV7 competition, I think if he's on his game, handles the big field, he's got a very, very good chance of going close. Yes, yeah, it's a similar one to Gaelic Warrior, isn't it? Obviously, there was a bit more chat around the mark of Gaelic Warrior, but as you said, it's it's a Mullins one. They've all said they think it's a lot better than what the mark has been given is. Um, it's top of the market. Gaelic Warrior, Warrior really wasn't far away. It was just Brazil was was one too good, but it's a similar story, I think. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing. I, I actually backed it for the, the Martin Pie, but not running no bet. So when I got my money back, put it straight on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully... Um, so moving on now to uh, the Albert Barlow, the Grey One Albert Barlow over three miles um, could be a bit of a slugfest, as in you've really got to grind it out to the finish. Um, who are you going for, Frankie? This, uh, after saying I wouldn't swap um, based on the ground in the first, I am swapping based on the ground. But God, by the time we hit the Albert Barlow on a Friday after a lot of rain Wednesday, it's going to be sticky. You're going to need a horse that just gallops and gallops and gallops. And for me, that's Hillcrest. If you look at that run recently at Haydock on heavy ground, when when Green Book took this horse on up front and it looked like they were getting into a battle and then suddenly Green Book fades and Hillcrest just keeps going and going and going. And then the second place, Crystal Glory, coming out of crack, keeps going and going and going. I think I think that uh, puts puts Hillcrest in a in a very strong position for conditions, a staying trip round Cheltenham. I don't, I don't think you could find a a better suited horse or better suited looking horse off of what he's done to go and win an Albert Bartlett. So, um, yeah, I'm stick sticking with Hillcrest. I think you're absolutely bang on. <coughs> Hillcrest is the is the way to go. Slightly drifted out because Ginto has been backed in. But yeah. I think you bang on about the ground. He's going to be very sticky, very tacky, even if it dries out. Uh, and Hillcrest is exactly the horse you need. This seven-year-old for Henry Daly, he's been super, but also the yard, really. They're not a yard that have massive superstar talents all the time. There's some lovely horses, but this one looks to be uh, an absolute super, uh, superstar to go forward with. Um, was a really nice bump for us at the start of 2021, placing on debut, then getting off the mark at Weatherby. Given a break, sent over hurdles this term, made a smart debut entry over two and a half uh, mile. 
beating the next time out winner, then back that up at Weatherby over slightly further, winning by 20 lengths under a penalty. Like you said, he just gallops, he gallops, he gallops. He landed the hat trick, beating I am Maximus. I know a horse that you like in a decent listed event at, at Cheltenham. And then his only blip this season has been when he went back to Presby Park in the Grade 2 Ballymore trial and unfortunately unseated his rider. But like you said, came back out quickly, none the worse for that mishap. Went to Haydock um, and I was there at Haydock that day. He was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. When Green Book took him on, I thought, oh, these two are going to blow up here. You can't go this quick in this ground. Yeah. And he just kept going and going. And the sectionals of how he finished that race and how hard he went off are absolutely unbelievable. And if he can do that again, I find it very hard for any horse to keep, yeah. to keep up with him. Oh, and he stays the three mile brilliantly and you need a horse like that for for this race. So, yeah, he'll crest for the both of us then in that one. Um, next one is the only race on the ITV7 free-to-play game at Fakenham. It's the 305 Class 4 Handicap, uh, handicap Hurdle over two miles four. Um, who did you come down on? Here comes Harry, I'm going with. Um, down, in, down in class, running a couple of Class 4s to reasonable... RPRs and then first in a class three um, a handicap hurdle off a mark of 106. He only goes off 110 today in a class four and the most recent one he had was in a class two. So they have been trying to step him up and up and I just, I don't know. I don't know how he's been dropped a pound for his most recent one in a class two, especially now coming into a class four. I think he's got to have a chance on weights um, and the ability he's shown and maybe even the, the trust that the owners and trainers have put in him, send him in, into these class threes and twos, you'd expect that they, they think his abilities may be a little bit beyond this. So here comes Harry, here comes Henry, sorry, not Harry. Here comes Henry. Um, <laughs> nearly, nearly there. Um, <laughs> down, down it, down in class and, uh, and down in weight. Can't complain at that. Yeah, we've gone for Highway 103. Um, looks a really nice five-year-old for Chris Gordon, who's been in good form all season, really. Won my 17 lengths last time out at Carlisle over a very similar trip and in a very similar race. Um, well, what I like about this horse is, and I know it's at the top of the market, but it's set to go up a further £12 in the handicap for its next race. But it goes off the, uh, well, that would be off a mark of 99. The handicapper has left him on a mark of 87, what he won off last time out. Um, he got Arkle winning rider Tom Cannon on board. And if you look at the two horses, uh, under him in the market, who are his rivals, he gets nearly a stone and a half off him. Yeah, so man. I think a... I think I think there's a lot to lot to like. I know he's the even money favourite, but prices don't matter with this game. You just need winners, and I just think if that runs to the same level as it did last time, getting all that weight, a great rider on board, well in with the handicapper, he's got so much going for him. I think I think I think he's got a really good chance in that race. Oh, you make a good case. I might be swayed. <laughs> <laughs> So, the, the next one is the pinnacle of the four-day meeting, uh, the Gold Cup, the race that everyone looks forward to every year. Everyone wants to try and get the winner. We've spoke about this race in depth for the last two or three months. Hopefully, we've found the winner. But, Frankie, I think I know who you're going with, but just for this, for this uh, ITV7, who, who are you going with? Yeah, you know where I stand and have stood for a long time. I, I won't go on too long, but... Galvin, I think, has got a great chance. And given the ground, probably an even better chance. Just a brilliant staying horse. Real, real tough, which you're going to need to be for the Gold Cup. Davy Russell on board, another hardened character. And he has answered every question that he's been asked so far, Galvin. He's got better and better and better. And this is kind of, you know, this is the pinnacle. This is the final question that he's got. He has got to rise to, in my opinion. But I do think that it's there. Um, for him to do and I think I think he's got the ability and he's proven around Cheltenham so Galvin I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because I've been saying it for long enough <laughs> but he's got a great chance he has to yeah I'm with you like, like as you know I'm in the Galvin camp massively um, what an amazing horse this has been for connections like during his career and if he was to win the Gold Cup, it'd be absolutely brilliant because they've put a lot into this sport. They've won some nice races, but winning the Gold Cup's huge, isn't it? Um, they won the National Chase last year in a really good renewal of the race, it looked. It, all, it also finished second to Imperial Aura over two mile four in the handicap that's been scrapped now at the festival. So his festival form's great. Um, this year, been campaign he looked to have been campaigning for the Grand National, but finding out how good he is over this trip, he got switched uh, switched to like a, a Gold Cup campaign. 
In October, went at Punchestown in a grade three trace, beating Animix. Then went to Down Royal, bumped into Frodon, who was in the absolute peak of his form, and finished a narrow second to him in the grade one champion chase. Uh, last seen at Christmas when what a ride he was given by David Russ. If he was given a very similar ride to this, I'll be a very happy man yeah. uh, on Gold like on Gold Cup Day because the way uh, maybe Rachel went off too soon, and if she had a chance again, she'd probably not want to go as quick on a Plutard that um, Galvin will meet again. But getting up late in that Grade One Savills Chase at Leperstown was pretty telling for me. Stamina is a big thing I like in Gold Cup horses. Uh, overclass probably sometimes, but I think this yeah. horse has both. And if they're two, what two outs still there, still going, when he if he jumps the last within contention, I think he'll fly up that hill. He's shown he does before, and I think he's got a super super chance um, of going close. And I think the market reads like that now. Yeah. I think the market's last gone massively, um, and I just think this stamina could be too much for some of them. Mm-hmm. So the final race across these four shows that we've covered um, from Cheltenham is the Hunter's Chase, a race that is an absolute minefield for punters, really. <laughs> um, we have a few studs at the race and still still not go close, but we'll try and find the winner in this one. So, Frankie, last selection of the ITV7 game on Friday, who are we going for? I'm going to go with Bob and Co for Paul Nichols. One that he actually said was his second best chance behind Brave Man's game, who unfortunately didn't run. Yeah, um on Wednesday it's so his second best chance of the festival um, and I mean that speaks quite strongly for him but he's he, on form as well he's got a brilliant chance he you know he's great over this trip if you look at his form there's a few blips but they're actually when they've run him over slightly shorter um, going around this trip he jumps well he travels and um, I think I think there's a fair fair bit to like about him it is competitive and it is hard work as well you just don't <sighs> You don't quite know how they're going to turn up for this. Um, but Bob and Co off, off, off the back of Nichols' is, um, good comments about him and, and off his form as well over this trip. Yeah, I was very torn in this race. Bob and Co was one I looked at, but the one I have gone with uh, is Bill Away. Yeah, um, Bill Away is a very consistent but the most frustrating horse at the same time. <laughs> um, back, back in here. Well, when you look at him, you back him in these hunter chases at Aintree, at Cheltenham, even even in Ireland. He, he's like he's got so much ability, but sometimes he doesn't want to put sticky stick out and go in the race. But saying that, he's one of the most classiest horses in this race. And if yeah. running two four, he's got to go close again. He was second in this race last year, beaten by short head by Paul Lott Bay, who's not in it this year. Them two pulled way clear of the rest that day. Um, and that was pretty telling for me. Campaign very similar to last year. Second on his debut at Thurles, uh, although needing the run. And he did finish behind wing leader, who is the second favourite for this race, but he massively needed the run that day. Next time out, came out at Navan, won easily by close to five lengths. And it's all been there. All systems go for the festival. I, I just think the way Mullins has talked about this horse and how the connections really wanted to win it last year and and I've got a great chance this year to do so. I think it could be his year to go close. But saying that, he's a very frustrating horse and you just need to see how he turns up on the day. Think, but he's got, did, he, did, did he say um, to Connections that he, that he would get this one for them or something along those lines? He, 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 did. he did. Yeah, he did. But I think he pretty much said the same last year. So, And he was only a short head away. So I'm hoping <laughs> with that horse who beat it last year, not in the race, he's got every chance. But... Bob and Co definitely got a big chance. Beat Bill away in the race at Punchestown. Mm-hmm. So, and what, double the price. So yeah. definitely got to have a chance. I think we, I think we've two solid stabs at a very tough race, I think, from both of us there. So, so Frankie, thanks for all your insight throughout the week and selections for today's ITV7 free-to-play game. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to the Wizard Enclosure channel. We have plenty of other content already live for the Cheltenham Festival. Don't forget to get involved with this completely free to enter ITV7 competition. Get set up in our league for the final day to be in with a chance of winning £100 for being top of the league and then £500,000 for winning the ITV7 on the Friday. So good luck to everyone who gets involved and hopefully we found you some winners there. And Frankie, cheers again. Thanks for the week. Thanks very much, James.